Jules, we start uh, the show with a bit of a dilemma. Yes, actually. since the uh, thalidomide tragedies of the 60s, drug trials have been surrounded in medical and legal controversy. Rules about the safety of medicines are understandably tight. But some terminally ill people are now getting the chance to be human guinea pigs uh, quicker than ever before for their sakes and for the benefit of future patients. Justin Rowler meets the cancer sufferers, happy to take the risk for themselves and for the good of medical science. The NHS faces a death try and conquer cancer. Its success depends on the ability of scientists to develop new drugs, and that in turn depends on something else, men and women who are willing to test those drugs. Across the country, terminally ill patients are volunteering to become human guinea pigs in the fight against cancer. They're willingly opting for experimental treatments in order to test the drugs of the future. Robert Hudson is 60 years old and has pancreatic cancer, one of the deadliest forms of the disease. So how ill has your cancer made you? I was very ill around about June time. Uh, I would get up in the morning and just lie on the settee. I couldn't get comfortable anywhere, I couldn't sleep. And I wasn't eating either, I was just, just wasting away virtually. Only 3% of those diagnosed with pancreatic cancer will survive beyond five years. But Robert is putting to the test what could be the treatment of tomorrow. Robert is one of just a handful of people who've had some of this stuff inserted directly into their tumour. Now this is 32p biosilicon and it's a radioactive source as you can hear. Now the idea is that this delivers a dose of radiation direct to the tumour, shrinking his cancer. He's still receiving chemotherapy, but hopes the new implant will significantly improve his prospects for the future. How difficult was it deciding whether or not to be part of this you know, experimental trial? It's a no-brainer. When your situation is desperate, hopeless, and there's a lifeline offered, you take it, you grab it. So far, around 800 patients have taken part in experimental cancer drug trials in the UK, aimed at speeding up the delivery of new treatments. Experimental drug trials are crucial. Without them, we wouldn't have any of the drugs that we take for granted today. But by definition, there are risks attached to taking part. Patients are being asked to take unlicensed drugs. Nevertheless, there's no shortage of willing volunteers. Professor Dion Morton heads the Experimental Cancer Medicine Centre in Birmingham and is in no doubt about the vital role volunteers play. The difficulty we have is these drugs are expensive, these treatments are uh, sometimes hazardous, and we need to make sure that we're giving them to the right patients at the right time. Without the patients taking part in trials, we could not make advances in cancer treatment. There are currently 19 cancer drug trial centres in the UK, but former England footballer Jeff Thomas would like to see more. Leukaemia almost claimed his life five years ago, and he's now raising £20 million to fund a network specialising in blood cancer. So what solutions are there out there? The frustrating thing is, after speaking to scientists, there are numerous drugs that are ready to go, and it's just pure funding. That's stopping clinical trials going into these products. Well, so these are drugs that the scientists think would work? These are life-saving drugs. But the sad thing is science is going at a great pace. The benefit to the patients is still stalling. Alan Rook is one of the lucky few testing the very latest in blood cancer treatments. He was recently diagnosed with acute myeloid leukaemia, a disease affecting 2,000 people in Britain each year. So how did you feel being told that you got cancer? How did I feel? I didn't uh, feel angry, I just felt uh, disappointed because I'm having a good time, you know, and I, I didn't really want it to stop. But um, I don't think it maybe it's going to stop now, I'm quite optimistic. Alan is trialling a new drug which it's hoped will prove to be a breakthrough in the treatment of his type of cancer. What we do here now, we mark corporate out of 10 for performance, we do artistic merit, and technical competence. Really? So how do you feel about being part of an experiment? It's better than not being on an experiment, isn't it? What's the alternative? Well, why do you say that? Well, because the alternative 
The alternative is full-scale chemotherapy, which is not very pleasant, or nothing, which means it just takes over and kills you. You know, so I, I, I think it's a good option. So being part of the trial kind of helps you sleep easy at night, knowing that you're helping other people. Yeah, sure. Because if, if, it, if it doesn't work for me, they will at least learn something. The impact of experimental drug trials on the future health of the nation will be huge. And it's clear the patients I met are already reaping the benefits from simply taking part. The quality of my life has improved 100%. To go from lying down and not thinking you're not going to last much longer, to looking forward to Christmas, because Christmas is just around the corner. I'm looking forward to Christmas, and I'm looking forward to what goes on beyond Christmas. Good luck to both Robert and Alan there. And just, I mean, most of us know someone who is suffering from cancer and who could benefit from these sorts of trials. But they are limited, though. It's a difficult thing to try and get involved in. Yeah, they, they could benefit. The trials are very, very limited. There really are very few places. Um, cancer Research UK have got all the details on their website. We've put a link from our website. So if you want to look at what trials there are and see what available places there are, you can look there. But, but be warned, they are very limited. And of course, if you take part in these trials, there's no guarantee you're actually going to get these experiences experimental treatments because half the people, at least half the people in fact, are controls. They don't get any different treatment from the, the usual treatment to see whether the drugs work or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you do get accepted with the trial, you may not be treated with these experimental drugs. So, in general as well, it's likely to be of more benefit to future generations, to medical science generally, than it is to you. But as, as he said there, you know, the, the, what, what has he got to lose? You know, he's very sick. These are all sick people on these trials. These are people who've been diagnosed mostly with terminal cancers. And, yeah, they don't have much to lose. Some of these treatments are quite promising. Um, so Robert there, who you saw had that radioactive material implanted right into his tumour, has seen his tumour shrink a bit. They're not saying that he's not going to, the cancer's not going to develop over time, but it seems to be developing more slowly. So there can be benefits, and that's what they're trying to find out, trying to see whether there are new treatments which will help us in our search for cures for cancer. OK. Thanks, Justin. More information at bbc.co.uk slash The One Show. Justin, thanks very much.